Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and I am the Math Lab Coordinator and work in room 222 of the Math and Behavioral Social Science Building. And I wanted to do an example on finding the standard deviation by hand. There are two formulas for this and this formula that I'm going to use for this lesson is, use my pointer tool here, S helps if it looks like an S, S squared equals N times the sum of x squared minus parentheses the sum of x squared all over n times n minus 1. Now this is the formula for variance. How do I know that it's the formula for variance? Because it has a squared on it. The formula for standard deviation is the square root is the square root of the variance. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to find the variance first and then to take the square root of that variance. When I, once I take the square root of the variance, I'll have the standard deviation. Notice that this formula is long, ucky, and has lots of parts. So we want to find a way to organize our data. If our data is not neat, we'll make mistakes, we'll lose a piece of data, and we'll get the wrong answer. One of the most common mistakes I find in helping students is that they'll tell me that they've left off one of the numbers or they'll have misadded one of the numbers. So we need a way to keep up with the numbers. So I'm going to put my numbers in a table. A table is the nicest way to keep the data. My data consists of four numbers. My numbers are 8, 9, 12, and 15. Now I'm doing a very simple set of numbers. There's only four numbers in my set. They have a nice average or mean, excuse me, a mean, and they have a fairly nice variance in standard deviation. I picked that on purpose. Your exercises in the book and the ones your teachers give you will be a little bit more complicated in that they will not have as nice of as numbers as what I will have in this example. But I chose that because you're looking at my face and the computer screen. I don't have the uh, ability at this point to show you the calculator and all, this, all the other steps as well. So we want to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. But the process works the same no matter what you're using on this or what numbers you're using with this. So let's look at this. And again, I'm going to put my numbers in a table. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm simply going to go and write X here, and I'm going to put my numbers down a list. It also helps to put your numbers in order. And I'm going to draw a bar here to show that that's the end of my list. Okay, 8, 9, 12, and 15. The next thing I want to do is sum up those numbers. Now, why do I want to do that next? Well, let's go back to my previous page. The first item in my formula is n. n is the number of items in my list. n is 4. How do I know that? 1, 1, 2, 3, 
four. There are four numbers on my list. I'm going to rewrite those numbers where I erased them out so that you can still read them. But there are four numbers on my list. What else do I have? I also have, sec next, I have the sum of x squared. Now, how do I know that? Well, that's this symbol right here. That symbol that I'm erasing right there. That symbol is, well, why would that come up? That symbol is a sum symbol. It means to add up. In this case, it means to add up the x's squared, and over here, it means to add up the x's and then the squares on the outside. So we need to do something with those two columns. So let's go back over here. We need to add up these x's. The x's are the individual data numbers. So I'm going to add those up. 8 and 9 is 17. 17 plus 12 is 29. 29 plus 15 gives me 44. So the sum of my x's is 44. Notice I just put the little sum symbol and then x equals 44. The next thing I want, again, based on my formula, is that I want to know x squared. So going back to this page, I'm going to square all of my numbers. 8 squared is 64. 9 times 9 is 81. 12 times 12 is 144. And 15 times 15 is 225. Now, I happen to know those because I'm a math teacher. You will not know those. So, you will do those on your calculator. Now, the next thing you want to do is add those up. And this will be the sum of your x's that are squared. This I did not do in my head. I did it on my calculator. But if you'll trust me that I did it on my calculator, and that when I did it on my calculator, I came out with 514. Now you can stop and pause the video because you are watching this as a podcast or a video on QuickTime. So you can hit pause and you can take your calculator and you can add these numbers up and you can say, well, 9 and 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 carry my 1. And you can do the rest of the math either by hand or with your calculator and come up with 514. Now, remember what our formula says. We want to take n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x parentheses squared and divide that all by n times n minus 1. n is the number of items. Again, we said that was going to be 4. The sum of x squared is this 514 that we have. The sum of x squared is the sum of x's, which is the 44. And then we square that number, so we're going to put a little squared right there above it. And then all of that's going to be over the n times the n minus 1. n being, again, the number of items we have, which is 4, times n minus 1. 4 minus 1 is... 3. Well, that gives us, I'll erase that part right there, that gives us 5 times 4, 5, uh, excuse me, 5, 4 times 514. I, that's a big mouthful. And again, if you'll trust that I did this arithmetic out, and if you don't trust me, stop the video again and do that. But that gives me 2056. And if I do 44 times 44, I get 
1936. That one I didn't know. I did use my calculator for those two parts. I did do 4 times 3 and got 12. Then we do the subtraction. 2056 minus 1936. And I get 120 divided by 12. And 120 divided by 12 is equal to 10. Most of the time, your answer will not be as nice as the 10. This was done deliberately to make a very nice problem. Now, I'm going to hit a new slide to give us a blank sheet of paper. And I'm going to write down what we have figured out. S squared equals 10. Remember that this is your variance. Okay? It is always represented with either an S squared, or if we're doing population, a sigma squared. But it's S squared for our variance, since we did a sample. And at this point, we need to find the standard deviation. To find the standard deviation, we take the square root of S squared, which is the square root of 10. And that gives me 3.162. And then at this point, you'll need to round according to what your teacher says. Each of our teachers round differently. And so you'll need to ask your teacher at what point to round to. Now, be careful. Not all the teachers use this particular formula. So be sure that this is the formula that your teacher wants you to use. But if this is the formula your teacher wants to use, this is the method in which you can do. If you have any questions, be sure to stop by room 222 and see me, and I hope this helps. Thank you.